So this demonstration is for the ProCare Parent Engagement application. So just some basic things about this application. First of all, this is designed as your communication mode for, uh, between your center and your parents. Um, and it's used in the classrooms by the teachers. Typically, this application will be downloaded. And by the way, the application will function on a variety of mobile devices. Um, in fact, most mobile devices will run the ProCare software. So when you go to download it, you're not looking for engagement. You're not looking for some other name. It's just going to be simply ProCare. Uh, so you can find that in the App Store, in the Play Store, if you're using an Android device. Those are the type of devices that will support this. Uh, you can also use a web browser, and I'll demonstrate both. I'm going to share my iPad with you in just a moment, and I'm going to show you the mobile application so you can see how that works. Uh, so it does run on a variety of devices you can download directly from the App Store or the Play Store. So you have a, a setup where you are synchronized with ProCare Desktop. So that's the same ProCare you've been using perhaps for years. Um, we're just referring to it as the ProCare Desktop, but it's ProCare. Um, and then this is the extension that your teachers will use, use on a mobile device in the classroom to record daily activities, possibly send messages to and from parents, uh, that sort of um, parent engagement communication. Uh, so what does synchronize from ProCare? And by the way, that synchronization, the data synchronization for this uh, connection with, uh, with your desktop is currently one way. And that includes rooms, children, parents, and teachers. So they will synchronize four times a day. This is the sync frequency for data only. Attendance synchronization is two way. And that is only for children at this time. So the two-way attendance sync um, means that you can record attendance in the mobile application and that'll sync back into ProCare. Um, or you can choose to record attendance in ProCare and it'll sync into the application. So you can record attendance in either system, whether it's ProCare desktop or whether it's in your mobile application or your, your web browser, you can record attendance either way. What I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna demonstrate the mobile application um, and we're going to demonstrate the web application as well. So I'll just point to a few things. This is the landing page. And generally speaking, you can do pretty much the same functions in the mobile application that you can do in the web application. There are some limits just because of the type of device it is. Uh, so I'll try to point those out uh, where they come up. So the first thing is when you first log in, you're gonna land on this page. I want to point out right away here at the bottom right where it says billing, if I tap on that, it says billing is not enabled in mobile. You'll actually do all of your billing information in ProCare. You won't do any billing directly in the parent engagement app, whether it's the website, or the web portal, or this mobile application. You'll do all of that in ProCare. So what I'm going to show you is uh, these other four buttons here, and we're going to go to the slide out menu after that. Uh, so the landing page that we have here is a quick view into all of the rooms. You can see here at the top, it says all rooms. If I tap on that, I can see all of the different rooms in the center and any tags. These are the tags that are available. And I'll explain tags a little bit in detail as we get to them. Uh, but that's one way that you can filter things. Um, you can also record a sign in from here. We can record activities. We can send and receive messages. And we can look at um, a planned calendar that we've set up. So I'm actually going to begin right at the bottom center where it says sign in. When I tap on that, I have two select. As the administrator, and that's how I'm currently logged in, I can record attendance directly as myself. So I'm going to tap on that first. And here it shows me all of the current children that are signed out. You can see I've currently got 14 signed in. If I tap over here, these are the kiddos who are currently in attendance. So I'm going to go to signed out. And then I'm gonna filter by a room because maybe I have some kiddos just in one room that I wanna sign in. So I'm gonna to go to all rooms and I'm gonna select the preschool room. And I'm going to say that uh, Daniela and Alan are being dropped off by parents right now and I'm gonna manually sign them in. 
So all I have to do is tap on sign in at the bottom and it says at the top for just a few moments, uh, it'll confirm that the children were signed in. And when I close this page um, and I go to uh, all rooms, oh, sorry, meant to show you the uh, preschool room there. I was already on it. So if we go back to the preschool room, you can see the, the two kiddos that I just signed in. There's a little green dot indicating that they are in attendance and you'll notice their picture is darkened in in full color. Uh, the kiddos who are not signed in, their, their names and their photos are sort of grayed out. So it gives you a quick visual of which kiddos are actually in attendance right now. So that is, uh, that's how you as an administrator can sign children in. So let's go back to sign in at the bottom center. And we're gonna tap on the parent kiosk option. And you'll notice at the upper right, and by the way, we're still on that one room, but if I tap on this, and it's very small in this image, uh, but if I tap on the icon at the upper right, now I get a kiosk. You will notice we have a QR code. I'll explain a little bit about that in the, um, uh, the web portal version but just a, a quick overview of what this does. It is a touchless way of launching sign-in for, uh, for parents. So the parent would bring up the parent application, the parent version of the ProCare app, and they would scan this and it'll launch the sign-in for their children. I'm going to manually input my four digit code as a parent. So let me put that in real quick. So I'm gonna sign in two of my kiddos so when I put in the code, it launches this page. The QR code does the same thing. It's just a different way of launching sign-in. That's all it's doing. Uh, but it is touchless, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to select both Bud and Kelly to sign in. And I'm going to tap sign in at the bottom. It'll ask me to answer the COVID-19 question that we've input. Uh, you'll have it available so you can put in multiple questions because I know the COVID-19 questions is really two to, to four questions that are potentially asked of uh, anyone that's, that's um, signing children in. Um, I'm just going to say none of the above and I'm going to just type in temp was because we're going to take their temperature, right? 98.6. So these kiddos had normal temperature. Now, because I turned it on, it says parent or pickup signature. I turned it on in the application, so I wanna capture a parent signature at, at drop off. So I'm just gonna say parent. And you can't read that very well, but that's how it looks. So now I've signed my kiddos in, and all I have to do, it says signing successful, and it returns me to the kiosk for the next sign in. So that is how a parent would use the kiosk to sign in a child. The cool thing is your teachers can do the same thing. So I'm going to put my code in as a teacher. I have a second profile as a teacher. Uh, so I'm going to drop my code in. And when I put that code in, I can select the room that I want to sign into. So I'm going to select um, preschool room. And all I have to do, and all, this is just a like a wheel so I can just, with the touchpad, I can just scroll and select. So I selected preschool room. And then it uh, might be kind of hard to see. There's a little check mark here. Just tap the check mark to confirm sign in. And then all I have to do is clock in. And it'll capture my clock in. It says clock in successful. That displays for about two or three seconds. And then it disappears. So you can use this for both parent and teacher sign-in. This is the sign-in kiosk. Uh, so that is how you get parents and kiddos signed in and teachers signed in. Um, you can do all of that through the kiosk as long as they have a code. So now we're back on our, our main page here. And I'm going to just go back to all rooms. Um, so that was sign-in. Let's go to the right and let's actually record an activity in the mobile application. Uh, so here, when I open up the activities, several things that you'll see on this page. First, you can record photos and videos, so you can capture media. 
Um, when you tap on photo, you will have the opportunity to upload multiple pictures at one time. Video can be up to one minute. That's a pretty long video for this application. Um, learning, these would be different um, learning activities. You can record meals, naps, bathroom or potty, uh, bottle feedings for infants, child's mood. You can capture incident reports and name to face tracking if your state requires it. At the bottom, you can view lesson plans. And I think, so I don't forget, I'm actually gonna begin here. We're gonna view a lesson plan for today. So if I tap on view lesson plans, these are the lesson plans that were assigned for today. Uh, so we've got finger painting and we have artistic expression. So today is an art day for the center. Um, and what you'll do when you're ready to share this activity with the parents, so you're going to record this activity for the children, and then you're going to share it with the parents. So maybe we want to do finger painting with the infant rooms. So we're going to go to share with parents. I'm going to select my infant room one, and I'm going to select all the kiddos who are present. Now, it wouldn't make sense for me to just select all because there's two children absent who didn't participate. So I'm selecting only the children who are present. When I tap next, it'll automatically input the key data, the details that we created for this lesson plan. And then if I tap in the box, I can add additional comments. So there we go. We can add additional comments and observations. And notice at the bottom right, I can even add a picture. So if I tap on the picture, I can either take a picture with the camera or I can go to a, an existing photo library, which is what I'm gonna do right now. And I'm just gonna to, uh, capture a picture here at random. I'm gonna choose the picture with blocks just because that's one of the pictures I've got. I tap use at the upper right-hand corner and it attaches that picture. So there we go. You'd probably take a picture live with the camera typically and you might just save it directly to the application. Totally up to you. You can also enter the exact time the activity took place. So maybe we were so busy finger painting that it was actually uh, at 9.30 that we did this. So I'm gonna say 9.30 that we started this activity and finished it. Tap the check mark and it saves the actual time that we did the activity. And then I can share the activity with parents if I wish. So I'm just gonna do share activity and that'll go to the parents. So there you go. That's how you can record um, a lesson plan that you've pre-designed. So now if you wanna record just a regular activity, you can do that. And I'll just show you how to record say a uh, bottle feeding. How about that? So if I tap on bottle, again, I'm in the infant room one. I'm just gonna stay there for a moment. I'm gonna select the bottle again for the children who are, are present. You can select them individually if you wish, up to you, but it's a lot faster if you just select those that are signed in as long as they're all participating. Tap next at the bottom. And now I can enter all of the information, including the number of ounces consumed. Might be kind of hard to see here, but it says tap to add. If I tap here, I can put in the number of ounces. So I'm gonna say all the kiddos were offered um, or drank at least five ounces of uh, that bottle. So I'm gonna start with five. Below that, I can select the time. Again, um, pretty busy handling four infants for a bottle feeding. So maybe I started that actually almost 20 minutes ago and I'm gonna tap the check mark to save the time. Now this is really important, especially for things like bottle feedings and diaper changes. Again, it might be hard to see, but it says, remind me again in 15 minutes, if I tap on the time, uh, excuse me, to the far right, it's really hard to see. I have to select that. Now I can tap on the time and I can select the time for the reminder. So for a bottle feeding, I wanna be reminded in two and a half hours to give those kiddos another bottle. So I'm gonna tap the check mark. So now I've got a reminder set and now all I have to do is record my description. Um, I'm just going to say description. I'm not going to put in a lot of text. And I can also, you see it says visible only to staff. You can't see it very well, but there's a little circle here. If I tap that, now this is only visible to the teachers and the administrator. So now the administrator will have to approve this before it's released to parents. 
So you can do that. And again, there is a picture icon there. Let's see if I have a picture of a kiddo getting a bottle. I don't, I'll just take a cute picture here. We're gonna use that picture. And so that picture will populate, but maybe it was a picture of a happy kiddo after they had their bottle. Um, and now I'm gonna just add that activity and that will save it for these children. So it returns me to my main page here for the infant room. Again, you'll see the green dot next to children that have, uh, uh, that are present. If I wanna edit the activity for one child, I can. I'm gonna tap on Brenda Elmore and I'll see the activities recorded today because maybe Brenda ate more than five ounces. She actually had seven ounces. So if I wanna edit this activity, I tap on it and now I can edit the activity. And by the way, I'm the administrator in this so I could actually approve the activity as well. I think you, you may have seen that momentarily. Uh, so now I can say instead of five ounces, she had seven ounces. So I wanna make sure that, and I would add any additional description items about how well she did with this bottle feeding and I'm gonna update that activity. So let me just tap on that one more time. If I tap on the activity, I can either edit or delete. Um, if it's something that requires approval, like the bottle, notice it says approve here. So as long as you're logged in as an administrator, you can do a lot of different things here. Now, while we're on Brenda's um, activities, let's tap at the upper right where it says profile. So if I tap on pro profile, I can see everything that's recorded about Brenda. Notice there is a camera icon at her picture. So if I wanna capture a live updated picture of her in the classroom, I can do that and I can save it. This is Brenda's profile. These are the basic things. It shows the parents' names as well. Um, I will go through this in uh, the web app, but you cannot add parents or pickups here directly. You've got to do that on the ProCare side. Uh, you can't add children, rooms, uh, or staff either. That's all done in ProCare and it synchronizes over. But you can view it here, including any tags on the child profile. Um, but you can also, uh, if you look here, there's notes that you could add that are specific to that child. Like if you do give her formula, it's gotta be Enfamil. Uh, so that's child profile. You can edit some things, but not all. So we'll go back to the main page once again. So that was recording an activity and I hope you can see there's a lot of different activities you can record. Um, and I showed you the sign in. We're gonna go next to messages. And again, keep in mind if I tap on messages here at the bottom left, there we go. Uh, so here I can see messages. You can see these messages were sent previously for the infant room because I'm still logged into the infant room, by the way, I'm still using that as my view. But if I go to the bottom right where the pencil icon is, again, keeping in mind that I'm the administrator, I can select all the rooms and I can select all the students, which would select all the family members as well. So if I do that, now I can send a message to everyone who's currently active in my center. I tap next at the bottom and I can put in my message. So here I'll say um, early closure tomorrow. So there's an event, we have to close early, otherwise they won't be able to get their children because there won't be any access. Uh, so we're gonna send that, I tap send and it'll say message sent. And now it goes back and you can see because I changed to everyone here, everyone got my early closure message. So if I scroll through, I should see every family member. Well, it'll be the children, but it goes to the, the parents of those children, the family members. So that's how you send a message. And again, as the administrator, I can send it to everybody. Teachers can do the same. You also have a calendar view here at the bottom left. So you can schedule events, whether it's for teachers or, or the families. Uh, you can schedule it here on a calendar. And you can see I've got calendar events, the previous and current. And my current events are the room cleaning for COVID. Um, so if I go to the upper right, I can actually create a new event. When you go there, you just have to give it a name. You've got to select the rooms, which would in, in effect uh, also select the family members. Um, you can put in a start and end time. 
uh, a description. You can say it's visible only to staff, so it would be a staff meeting of some kind. And then you would submit that at the bottom and it would create a new event for you. Um, I think it is pretty self-explanatory. You're basically just creating a calendar event, but it is very handy um, to create events where you can invite parents, like maybe it's an open house or maybe it's parent-teacher conference. So that is all of the buttons here at the bottom. Let's go next to the slide out menu. So here we are, we have been on the home page, the home tab. We're gonna go next to getting started. Now it says add students, add room. You can't, if I go to add students, it'll tell me that I can only do that in ProCare. So you cannot add students or rooms directly in the mobile app or in the web app, you've gotta do it in ProCare. I just can't emphasize that enough. You can send the invitation directly from the application. So if I go here, I can send the invite uh, to the parent if I want to. Um, it's probably easier to do from the web version of the application, uh, but you can do it either way. You can post new student activities, all that does. It's just a different way of bringing up the activities page. So you can do that. Um, and there's the sign in kiosk. It's another quick way of accessing the kiosk. It's just a different way of getting to it. So that's all on the getting started tab. So you've got a couple of ways that you can get to things. Again, as the administrator, I have access to send messages to staff members. So I showed you how to uh, send messages to all the family members. Um, so here, if I go to the bottom right, tap the pencil, now I can see all of my current staff members. So I could select all of them. I could select just a few that are here today, perhaps. Uh, so I only want to send it to those that are signed in, for example. Um, and then I would just go next and I could send them the message. Pretty straightforward again for messaging. And that is staff messages you can see a live room status. So as an administrator, if you just wanna get a quick visual to make sure you've got a teacher in every room that has children, you can do that very easily. And you can also see which kiddos are signed in. So notice we've got the infant's room so one and two. They both have four kiddos and one teacher. So that is right at the room ratio. Um, you've got the twos room, preschool, and we've got kiddos signed in, but no teacher here. Hmm, wonder how that happened. Uh, so we'll make sure there's a teacher in there. There's probably a teacher. We just, they're not signed in for some reason. So we need to make sure we get a teacher signed into those rooms, right? Um, so that's what it's for. You, you can quickly monitor this. I'm going to tap on the children, the number of students in infant one, and I can immediately go to that room and I can see the students who are signed in. And if I tap on staff, I can see the staff member who is signed in. Um, if you tap on the room, itself, it'll do the same thing. It's just any time you tap anywhere on that row and you'll see that. But that is your live room status. It's quick insight. Below that is my school. When I tap on my school, I can see just basic statistics, the number of rooms, the number of parents, students enrolled, and the staff members who are employed. Um, again, there's another way to get to parents here. I can select the family members uh, and I can send them an invitation. I can also invite staff. And what I'm really doing when I'm talking about invitations, this is an email that goes to that person and it says, set up your, your profile, set up your account basically. So you've got them, they're in the system, but now the parent or the teacher just needs to set up a password and username, which is username is usually email. Um, but you just want to set that up so that they see their own preferences and they can set their preferences, including their password. So that's uh, what those invitations do. Uh, so this is my school. We're going to continue down to school profile. Uh, you can just see information that is synchronized from ProCare. We can look at school settings. Now these, on the mobile app side, all you can really do is turn them on or off. The web application is where you really set up some of these things. So you can see I turned on parent signatures. That's why I had to input a signature when I signed two kiddos in. Um, but this is really just an on off function here. You cannot edit these things directly in the mobile application. I'll show you that in the web app. Uh, but those are some basic settings for school settings. 
And finally, if you do have multiple locations, you can switch schools. So that's kind of cool. You can switch between uh, whatever locations you have. Uh, so finally, last thing is help and support. You go here, there's a help center. You can see just right off the bat, a number of articles that you can access. These are common articles. You can search for articles by going to the search box. I'm not gonna do a search right now, but you could tap done and it returns you to this page. You can contact customer service if there are things that you need to request. And there are some things you may wanna request. Um, so you can start a new conversation and then you can write your message here and send it. And it'll tell you how long it's gonna take um, and the people who are currently on technical support. So that, uh, that's pretty handy. You can report an issue. The nice thing about this is that it captures your username, it captures the app build, uh, the device model that you're using and the iOS version of my iPad. So it captures all of that so they know exactly what's going on. Uh, so I'm gonna delete that draft. And then finally about just shows you the current version of the application. You can expand these to see our mission, et cetera. It just goes to the ProCare website. So that's everything I wanted to show you in the mobile application. So here we are in the mobile application. And the default page is a dashboard. Uh, so let's take a quick look at this. So dashboards, um, if you are familiar as any organization may do, a dashboard is quick analytics, quick insight into key metrics for your account. That's really what it is. And of course, the main metric you wanna be sure of is that live room status that we were already talking about. You can look right through there. Um, and if you click on a room, you can see the attendance. Again, the kiddos who are um, active, they have a little green dot next to their name. I'd also like to point out at the bottom left, it says linked with ProCare desktop. So you know that you're in the, uh, the uh, engagement parent um, application and that you are linked with ProCare if it says ProCare desktop here at the bottom left. So I just wanted to point that out for you. So this is the dashboard. First section here again is live room status. You can just click on any room and it'll show you the current status of that room. A little bit further down, you can see some basic analytics where it's comparing days. So if I wanna compare today with another date, I can. I'm gonna to go to last Thursday. So I'm comparing with last Thursday and I can see a number of sign-ins. It looks like um, it'll give you a percentage there as well. Um, number of missed sign-outs. Uh, I gotta tell you in my training accounts, I always miss sign-outs because I'm only demonstrating sign-in usually. Sign-out is pretty much the same thing in reverse. <laughs> so uh, that's why they, they check in, but they don't check out. Um, school stats, you can see again, the number of rooms you've got set up and they are synchronizing from ProCare. You can see the number of students, parents, and staff. Messages, same thing. I can compare one month over another. Um, and you can see it here, September through October and then August through September. So it's comparing month over month. Um, we can look at daily activities. Again, these are probably the most common activities recorded. Uh, so that's why these appear first. Um, and then below the end, of course, you can select week over week here. So you can compare one week's activities to the previous, if you wish. And then finally at the bottom, you can see all of the pictures recorded recently, and it's just a rotating slideshow as it were. So as I record pictures in the activities, uh, they'll appear here and I can view it as a slideshow if I want, which is kind of cool. Uh, so other navigational things um, on this main page, there's a question or a chat icon at the bottom right if you click on that. And I know I was showing you this in the mobile app, you can send a message. Um, here, or you can search for articles here as well. And there's a couple of reasons you may, uh, you may actually have to message for help, and I'll point those out a little bit later. Uh, but you also have that functionality here on the main page. Uh, and there's also some quick tutorial videos that appear here at the right. So now what we're going to do is continue down the left side of the page, and these are your primary functions in the web application. So under My School, uh, we can see all the students 
It's the same as that page I was showing you in the mobile app where I could scroll through all of the students. Um, even though it says add student, you can't. You're synced with ProCare. You cannot add students, rooms, staff members, um, or parents because the parent is part of the child profile. Um, and speaking of child profiles, let's click on a kiddo's profile. Let's look at Betty Boop. So here's Betty. Notice the little padlocks again, because she, uh, the synchronization comes from ProCare. So you cannot update this information directly in the web application for, for the engagement app. You've got to do it in ProCare. Um, anything with a pencil, you can update directly in the application. So if there's a pencil, you can update it. And that includes tags. So maybe Betty has an allergy. That's why this is flagged, uh, but she's also full and she is also full time. But notice I don't have a full time tag. I can add it directly here. I'm just gonna say full time. So I'm gonna create the full time tag and I'm gonna submit that. And now I've got three tags for Betty. Um, and tags, by the way, are just another way of filtering for children. You can do it by classroom. Um, you can search for a child's name or you can filter by applied tags. So that's another way you might wanna look at it. As we scroll down, you'll see any siblings. Uh, there's a place for notes, et cetera. You can add um, anything with a pencil you can update here. Um, and then here's the parent at the very bottom. So I know I didn't go into detail about it, but you see the invitation here. If I click on reinvite because I've already sent an invitation, uh, the fact is these are all fake email addresses. Um, so they never go to anyone real. So that's why no one ever replies. Uh, to these, but we can re-invite the parent um, if they need a new invitation for whatever reason, email address, for example. You can see the email address. Again, you cannot edit or add a parent here. Um, it just won't let you. You can click on it, but you're not going to get anywhere. Same with adding a pickup. You cannot add them directly in the um, uh, web application or the mobile application. You just can't do it. That's a ProCare function. So here, if we go back to the top for this kiddo, there's immunizations. This is data you capture in ProCare if you really feel strongly that some of these immunizations need to be captured in the mobile application and in the, the web app here as well, you can add them here directly. You can also upload any documents that again, you feel are very important for that child. You can upload them directly to the child's profile um, and you can upload that file here. So that is students. We'll go next to rooms. Again, you cannot add a room here. There's an add button, but it will not function. Um, and they are all locked. Again, if you see a padlock, you're not gonna be able to add it, but you can view your rooms here. Um, you can edit an age range if you wanna assign the age category to the room. You go to staff members. Again, they will synchronize from ProCare. And I do wanna point out that if you do have um, an app like Gusto that you use for staff time cards, it will integrate with the application. Says so right there. If you just go to get started, you can get going on it. I'm not gonna demonstrate any of that for you today. Let's take a look though at a teacher profile. And again, all you have to do to view a teacher profile, and when you mouse over, you can see Amy's uh, four digit pin to sign in. If I click on Amy's name, I could upload a new picture if I want to. Uh, but notice that she is locked. I cannot add teachers here or edit some key information about the teacher. What I can do is edit the role and permission directly in the parent app. So if I click on that pencil icon, you'll see three different levels of access. Teachers will default to what you're seeing here. So they have full access to students, the student address rooms, parent pickup, uh, parent contact information. These are default settings. Um, full access means that whatever is allowed in the application, they can do. Read only, it's just that. They can only read it. They can't do anything with it. They can just see what's entered. No access would hide it entirely from that person, from that teacher in this case. Um, I can't even select that here because the whole purpose of a teacher is being able to see or edit uh, information for students or enter activities, things like that. Um, however, if I go further down, staff time cards, she has no access, uh, but I could always give her read access or even full access if I need to have her help me as the administrator with uh, 
recording time card data for other teachers. So maybe she's like a lead. Um, I'm not gonna change any of that, but if I did have changes, I would just click save changes at the bottom. But you can um, edit the basic access. Um, final thing I'll show you though, you can promote someone completely to administrator if you wish, which gives them the same access that I'm demonstrating for you now. So I'm gonna close that and that is staff members. Tags, I already talked a, a bit about tags. Uh, this is just the page where you can add them if you wish. You can see all the different tags that we already had, including the, uh, the full time, full day, because uh, I added one of those for, uh, for Betty. Uh, but you can add additional tags here as you need them. Again, they're great for filtering. So we're gonna move on now to student sign-in because if you don't wanna use another way of doing it, or if you are manually signing a kiddo in for any reason, uh, you can go here and sign them in. So I'm gonna create a sign-in um, and I'm gonna say sign-in attendance, but you can also sign children out here as well. Uh, so if I wanna sign in attendance, maybe I wanna add more kiddos uh, to the kindergarten room. Um, I could also filter by tags, but I'm not gonna do that right now. And maybe all of them are getting dropped off at once. So I'm gonna have a full classroom here. So I'm gonna select those kiddos and they're going to the kindergarten room. They were signed in by me and I've got three sign-ins. I've got to choose the right one. And the time they were actually signed in was let's say 915 Pacific. So I'm gonna sign them in and those kiddos are now signed in. Uh, so you can, you can do that pretty quickly there if you wanna manually sign children in. You can filter for previous dates if you wish and, and take a look in the past. You can look at monthly. It just gives you basic statistics about kiddos. So you can see the number of si uh, times signed in and the number of hours attended. Um, you can also look at absenteeism um, and you can run dates there, date over date, um, or you can mark children absent directly. Um, I'm not gonna go into that detail. Um, we can monitor ratios and you can set alarms or alerts. So here at the top of the page, these are alerts that I can set for room ratio. That way I know if I'm way out of ratio for any room, like I've got right now, it looks like my infant room two has five kiddos and I know my ratio is four to one. So I actually need to add a teacher to this room uh, or I need to move one of those kiddos to a different room. Can't really do that because I'm already at my room ratio for infant room one as well. So I'm gonna add a teacher to this room at some point and we'll get to that here in just a moment. Now you can also just mouse over and you can see very quickly um, insight into your room ratios. So that's a cool little chart. It just shows you for each room, the number of students and the number of teachers. I can block some of those from view so I can look only at uh, a few rooms if I wish. I can change the time frame. So I'm gonna say in the last three hours, that makes it just a little easier to see. Uh, it spreads it out on the chart a little bit, but it's kind of a handy quick view chart. So that is ratio monitoring. So once I've looked at those ratios, I can say, gosh, I'm missing teachers in some rooms. So these are the teachers currently signed in. I can create a manual sign in by clicking on create clock in. I can select the staff member and today it's gonna to be Wayne Van Horn and he is bravely going to the kindergarten room um, select the date, make sure you have the correct date. And he was actually here at 7.30 this morning. I could make any notes about Wayne if I need to, and I'm gonna save those changes. So now Wayne appears here and he is signed in. Uh, let's say I wanna create another one because I know I've got a room or two that don't have any kiddos. Uh, let's see who I wanna sign in. Let's sign Steve in. Steve, you're gonna be signed into a room here. We're gonna put you in the pre, uh, let's see which room we're gonna put you in. Preschool room, yep, that's where you belong for today. No! <laughs> we'll have to put Jeff in a room too. So we're gonna to sign you into the preschool room. So there you are, Steve is signed in now. So now we're back in ratio. We've got teachers in the rooms and I probably missed a room or two there. Uh, but just showing you how that works. You can do that here or your teachers, like I showed you in the kiosk, they can sign in with their four digit code. Uh, so now we've got everyone signed in. We're gonna move on to learning. Um, now here, remember I showed you the lesson plans that we used today. We had artistic expression.
expression and finger painting. And I showed you how to add finger paint, painting plan. If I want to add an additional plan to today, you can see this is today. I can just go to the bottom where it says add lesson and I can select from existing lessons. So I can do that. Maybe it's a brand new lesson. So I can go to create new lesson. Um, I'll be redirected. I'm going to be redirected to the creation page. So here I am. Now I'm going to give it a title because today we're playing in leaves. Um, so we're playing in leaves, lesson category, uh, outdoor activity. I'd give it a full description here, playing in leaves. It's going to be more than that. Outcome, fun, playing in leaves. I can add milestones. Milestones could also be your state standards, by the way, which you can have added. You can also have Montessori standards added to your account. All you have to do is go to the chat box at the bottom right and request them and they'll be turned on for you. Mine are already turned on. So if I wanna add a milestone, I can go here and I'll just add some things here at random and submit that. Labels would be the age range. So I'm just gonna select all age ranges because maybe the whole center is participating. I can select the rooms. So I'm gonna select um, all the rooms. All the kiddos are going across the street to the park to play in the leaves. Um, and the uh, activity is gonna last two hours. No, actually we're gonna say an hour and 30 minutes. So that's an hour and a half. You can enter the duration of the lesson. Now you can also add a link, a URL, or you can attach a file, a document of any kind. And then when I save this new activity, it'll be planned for the date uh, for this uh, um, as one of my lesson plans. I shouldn't say for that date. It's, it's one of my lesson plans. But now that makes it available for me to add to any date. So if I go back to weekly plan, maybe we're going to do that tomorrow. So we're going to say playing in leaves. We're going to select it and we're going to choose it. And now I've got um, the story time for tomorrow and playing in leaves. So you can do that on the fly here in the web application. You cannot create lesson plans uh, directly in the mobile app you've got. There. So closely related to that, we can see all lessons and that's where we, uh, you can also click on create lesson up here. Um, you can also view milestones. And I mentioned it to you a moment ago that these can be state standards. Just go to the bottom right and uh, create a new message here. Send us a message and just say, please add the state standards for my state or Montessori. So you could do that. So I'm gonna close that for now. So I did that and these are my state standards. So I can go through, you can see every one of them. You can manually add them. If you don't wanna use a state standard, you don't have to. You can add a domain which would be typically a, a code of some kind, either a number. In my case, I did uh, three character codes. The domain would be a description of whatever that milestone is, and then uh, the age range. Um, when I save that, it'll create that new milestone, and I can manage categories. Uh, these are the age categories again, and I could add a new category if I want to modify that at all. So you can uh, create categories or age categories. Finally, also under learning are assessments. So once you've added those state standards, now you want to begin uh, doing assessments for children on each of these areas of, of child development. So if I want to add one, for example, for uh, Betty Boop, I'm going to click on Betty. It'll begin right at the beginning, social and emotional development. And if I want, I can select uh, that she is proficient in this. And I'm going to say yes. And it'll change all the subdomains for this domain uh, to the same assessment level. So you can see proficient appears for social emotional, and it records it for everything to do with social emotional development. Um, but if I want to change it for like interaction with peers, cooperation, I can say maybe she's very good at that. And I'm going to just say yes, and that'll change it for that. Um, you can view the portfolio. If I click on view portfolio, it opens another page for me and I can see her portfolio where I've assessed proficient for that particular uh, first item. Um, and you can manage progress as well. Uh, this just changes, maybe you don't like developing or limited, maybe you wanna call it something else. Uh, so you can change that or you can add new categories as you need. Uh, so that is learning.
The most important here probably is parent connection. And this first feature is my favorite. These are newsletters. You can see these are letters, newsletters that I've already sent. So I can, I can see what I've previously sent and it'll just keep filling up as you go through. Um, you can click on the right and create a new one, or you can go to drafts and see what you've currently got in your uh, development mode. So you can see I'm developing currently my fall at the little red schoolhouse. So if I go on there, it opens up my newsletter and I can continue creating this newsletter. So these are the pictures that we captured um, in the future <laughs> for, uh, for the uh, playing in leaves day. So uh, we're gonna talk about playing in leaves and we could add uh, like article detail here at the top. So if I just drag and drop, I can create that. So here it says sample text, but I would begin writing my article by clicking on the pencil icon. And I can start writing my article about the kiddos playing in the uh, park in the leaves. Uh, so you can do that. It's just drag and drop formatting. It is so easy to do. Uh, you can see, I'm just gonna add another article down here at the bottom. So there we go, I've got uh, another picture I can add and text that goes to the right. However you wanna format it, it's totally up to you. And you can always add attachments if you wish. Uh, so maybe with the newsletter, you're going to attach the meal plan for the month, uh, for the coming month. Um, notice that you can continue to save it as a draft or you can preview and send. If I go to preview and send, either I can send it immediately, um, but before I do that, I've gotta add students. So I'm going to select everyone. I'm going to select all. So this is eventually going to go to all the family member. Um, I can also choose staff. I'm going to send all my staff members as well. I'm going to say done. So now I've got everyone selected. And I can either send it right at this minute if I wish, or I can schedule it for a date. So because this is for November, I'm going to schedule it for uh, November... Uh, second, that Monday, the first Monday of November. Actually, you know what? I probably ought to send it before that, like Saturday, the 31st. So, and I can set the time that it sends. I'm going to put in 7 a.m. and I'm going to schedule that. So that's scheduled to send at 7 a.m. on Halloween. Uh, so now it moves to scheduled. So we've got drafts that we're currently working on and we've got previously sent. It is a great feature. I know you're going to love it. Um, we can go to messages. I'm not going to do this again, but you can send messages directly from here. And again, I'm logged in as the administrator. Uh, the only difference here, when you send a new message here, you can also send a text message if you select it here, or you can drop it in the sign in or out kiosk if you wish. I'm not going to send another message. I'm just going to close that. You can record daily activities directly here. Again, I already showed you how to do that in the mobile application, which is how most of those are gonna be captured. You can create meal plans. You can see I've got a couple of menus created, one for today, one for tomorrow, um, and maybe I've planned it for the whole month. Once you've planned it, and by the way, all you have to do is click add another, uh, you can put in your food items and you can continue to save and add here. You can select the meal, whatever time of the day it is, um, and I just continue to add those as well. Uh, but if I want to share this meal plan with parents, all I've got to do is click share plan and then uh, continue and it'll share that plan. Um, select all the kiddos, send the email, and that meal plan is shared with parents. Pretty cool. Calendar, I showed you this in the mobile application. You can do the identical thing here. You can create a new event. It is the identical thing. It just looks different in this view, but you can do the same calendar settings here. Uh, you can also filter by room. Uh, you can also filter by previous days or weeks if you want to see what that was about. Reports, you can run reports on these categories. You can see child sign in and out attendance. So you can look at daily attendance, absentees, monthly hours, monthly attendance or attendance by child. When you run a report, it appears here at the right. So if I click on the report button, It'll say today for all rooms generate report. It'll show that it's in progress. I'll come back. Oh, look at that. It's already done. If I open the PDF, it'll open up in a browser window for me. So you can see when I signed Bud and Kelly in, it captured my signature. And you can see the signature right here because I turned it on for sign in. 
And it also shows the question that was asked in the kiosk. So there it says kiosk form. Uh, so that is, uh, those are reports. There's a lot of different reports. You can also run uh, clock in and out for staff. And there are some management reports you can run. I'm not gonna take the time to go through all these. You can see a quick description at the bottom. And, uh, and then finally at the bottom are school settings. Now I really did wanna show you this, including the parent kiosk form. It is currently enabled. I can edit that. And this is where I set up that COVID-19 question. So you can put the question in and notice that we do have the ability to answer multiple times. Uh, so if the chi child did have fever or chills and a sore throat um, and a temperature, my gosh, we're not gonna let them in that day probably. Um, but this is something that you can set up. And if I check this box, the parent can answer multiple questions. They can make multiple selections. When should the form be displayed? On sign in, we can also select sign out. And these are the hours of operation. So I've just enabled those uh, for the children at sign in. And then click enable form and that turns it on. Another really important piece here is the contactless QR scan. Uh, so notice if I click launch QR kiosk, it'll show me the code. Now that's the same as I showed you in the mobile application. But the cool thing here is, you can print the code and you can keep reusing it for an extended period of time. So I can give it an expiration date if I wish. So maybe I wanna go out to next week. I could do that and I could say it expires at 7 a.m. Well, actually I'm gonna say 6 a.m. which is my hours of operation. Um, and then I could print that and it would print it out and I could post it like in the window at my center, or I could put it on a protected kiosk or something like that, uh, like a podium or something. Parent would scan the code and they would launch their parent app to sign their children in. So I could do that. I'm not gonna print that right now. If I don't print it, this code would refresh every couple of hours. So that is the QR code. And I did talk about that in the mobile app, so I'm not gonna go any further on that. And then finally, there is contactless um, curbside. So if I enable this, I'm turning on a geofence. The geofence, once the parent is within this range, they can open up the parent application and they can sign their child in directly while they're sitting in the car. Um, and then a staff member from your center could come and pick the child up. And that would probably maintain the greatest social distance possible. Uh, you don't even have to get in arm's reach. Uh, so this is uh, kind of a cool feature. You can expand that geofence if you wish. Um, maybe you're, you have a large parking lot, uh, who knows. Um, but uh, I'm gonna keep it at a smaller area because this is just the curbside by my center uh, because I don't, wanna make, I don't wanna expand it to 200 yards and have somebody sitting at the restaurant and signing their child in. So I'm gonna leave it at 50 meters. But that is kind of cool. Uh, so those are uh, some of the key settings. You can see the school profile here. Again, uh, you can edit profile. There are some fields you can update here. And finally, again, we can see integrations. These are all the integrations for the application. Again, I'm not going to demonstrate any of these. Just know that you can integrate any of these applications if you currently own them. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining me. I know... Um, that's a lot of information and I go through it very quickly. There's a lot you can do in this application.